guys, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you are new, my name is Heather. I'm a homeschooling mom of three kids, elementary and high school age. I help you implement systems and strategies in order to overcome the chaos and cultivate simplicity in your home and homeschool. Today, I'm going to be doing my fall goals refresh, so let's get into it. Okay guys, first thing I want you to know is that I am doing my refresh early. If you are new, you may not know, but if you are not new, you will probably know that I adjust my year based on the seasons that we have going on in our life. So for my first quarter, it is the traditional January through March. My spring is shortened to just April and May. Summer is June, July, and August. And then fall is September, October, and November. December is its own thing. I do not set new goals in December ever. <laughs> I use that to focus mainly on family and traditions and the holidays and all of that stuff. So I just know for myself that it is better to not try to set new things in December because we're so incredibly busy with things that don't happen the rest of the year. And so I just set aside December knowing I'm going to focus on family and focus again a little bit on preparing for the next year and let that go for this year's current goals. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go through how the summer went and then I will move into what I have planned for the fall. I am super excited because next week I get to share all of the 2025 Cultivate What Matters products with you. I'm so, so excited to share all of the new stuff. I have everything and I can't wait. I love the changes that they have made to the 2025 power sheets. It's something that I've been looking for since 2021. And so I'm really excited to share that with you. So that will be on September 3rd. If you're watching this live, come back next Tuesday so that I can share everything with you. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through my quarterly goals. So each season in the power sheets, there is space for a quarterly refresh. And there is a section where you can refresh your goals. You can either rewrite your yearly goals or what I tend to do is write my seasonal goals here, my 90 day goals. I really, really like 90 day goal planning. If you've read the 12 week year, that goes very much in depth on how to plan 12 week years. And I love that book. I reread it pretty much every year just to remind myself of some of the strategies. So I'm going to go through these and then let you know Monday I will have my September goals and my August goals progress. So there is going to be a bit of crossover between the two videos, but this is where we're starting. So my first goal relating to my Rhythms of Renewal goal was to continue to focus on both the rest and restore rhythms. And I feel like I did a pretty good job with this. I was trying to focus on rest this summer, mainly because towards the end of May, I got shingles. I've mentioned this in so many videos, so I'm sorry if it's a repeat for you. But I knew that I needed to make some lifestyle changes and slow down the number of projects that I was trying to focus on every day, every week. It's really hard for me to not stay busy and to take things off of my to-do list. It's very challenging. But this summer, one of the things that I focused on was doing work-related stuff in the morning that was homeschooling, that was homeschool planning, that was home management, that was my work, work stuff, all of that, trying to finish that, you know, by like one, two o'clock, and then spending the rest of the afternoon and evening resting, doing fun things with my kids, reading, sitting out on my deck, enjoying the beautiful weather. We've had a beautiful summer here in Maine. And so I wanted to take time to rest, reduce the mental load, reduce the level of stress that I was putting myself under. Nobody else is putting stress on me, um, but it is, you know, self-induced stress, I guess, and just really leaning into rest. And so I feel good about that quarterly goal. The next quarterly goal related to my Rhythms of Renewal goal was to create and implement a connect rhythm. I am using the book by Rebecca Lyons, Rhythms of Renewal, as kind of a guide for this goal this year. It is not the first time that I've read it. I think it came out in 2019, and I like how she separates into four different sections. It made it very easy for me to sort those into quarters of which area I would focus on in which quarter. And 
I felt like I did a good job. I met with friends for coffee a lot. I was reaching out. I was doing the texting and trying to stay connected with friends and family. And so I feel really good about how I did with that rhythm. These are rhythms that are constantly growing and can constantly be nourished. And uh, so it's something that it'll, I will continuously work on, but focusing on it for this summer was very good for me. The next two goals are related to my embracing legacy goal. And originally, well, I'll probably get into this, when I do next year's goals and I do kind of a recap of 2024, but embracing legacy, I had a similar goal in 2023 that I made zero progress on. The embracing legacy is partly memory keeping and just relationship building with my kids and my husband and my family. And then also the more practical side of estate planning and future planning and all of that stuff. So I have taken steps but not as many as I would like. This summer, my two goals were to figure out a memory keeping routine and start to implement it. And that I'm still kind of thinking about things. I'm not entirely sure what I want to do. I have a lot of ideas, but I haven't figured out how to manage the time involved. Sorry, the sun is going back and forth. So if you see me dim and then brighten up, that's why. But I did start keeping a one line a day journal in my Erin Condren Life Planner right there. It's the weekly life planner and there are so many extra notes pages. So what I've been doing is just taking one line a day and just writing a positive thought or something fun that we did um, as a family or just something good that happened, just all positive. And I really like having that. I have some different ideas for next year on things that I may want to implement. I had wanted to implement a routine surrounding writing to my kids in their journals. I've talked about this a few times. In fact, I mentioned it in my fall mom's morning basket video, which I will leave linked for you if you're interested. I have journals for my kids and it's tier three of my morning routine. But what happens is I do not have enough time to get to tier three based on when I wake up and when homeschool starts and all of that stuff. So I need to find a different time to plug in that routine and attach it to something that I'm already doing because I'm not consistent with it. And that's, that's what I want. I want to be consistent consistently writing to my kids in their journals so that eventually I can give them to them, you know, when they're older, etc. Uh, the second goal was to finish the Florida scrapbook and video. That was very ambitious. I'm not entirely sure why I put that down. I have made a lot of progress. I've uh, done quite a bit of editing. I have so much footage from when we went to Florida, so it's going to take me a long time. I want to finish the rough edit and choose the pictures that I'm going to insert into the video by the end of the year <laughs> and maybe choose some music to put to it as well. This is not for YouTube, it's just for family, but it is something that I'm working on, did not complete it, but I have made progress and so that is what is important. As far as the scrapbook goes, no. Nope, I haven't done it, but I did order my pictures, which I feel like is always the biggest hurdle for me since I've always loved taking pictures. I've had a camera, gosh, maybe since fifth grade, and I loved film um, and getting my pictures developed and everything like that. But when we moved to digital and took more photos on memory cards and on my phone, probably starting around 2009, 2010, I stopped being as good about printing photos out. And over the years, I've lost tons of photos from computers breaking, not having things saved to a cloud, like prior to really cloud saving when everything was just on my computer, etc. And so I never printed out photos and I'm bummed that I've lost so many photos over the years. So I was concerned that I would not print out photos. So I just went in and printed out everything and had it delivered and I got a great deal. Snapfish had like 50% off or I don't know, like a hundred free prints or something like that. So I got a really good deal on printing all of my photos. I have not made any progress after that, but at least I have the photos. Now I kind of need to sort them. I also need to get an album. That's going to be on my fall goals, uh, which you will see soon. But I feel, I feel good about the progress that I've made. I think it was very ambitious. I think what I when I originally set out to finish those two things this summer. It was mainly because 
we're not homeschooling as much in the summer and so I thought I would have a lot more time but what I ended up doing was really leaning into rest and and literally just sitting and resting and kind of decompressing journaling a lot um, and that's what I needed to do so I didn't have as much creative energy <laughs> to work on anything Anyways, the next two goals are related to my continue to create a life-giving home goal. And the first was to create and implement new, a new chore calendar and daily habits with the kids. And we have done that. I use my daily habit tracker. I will insert a picture here for you to see. And what I do, I use this as part, partly homeschool, partly chores, partly just like extra stuff that we have going on. And I list everything down on the left. And then I cross off the days that we aren't recording to do those things that's mainly for my own homeschool planning it makes homeschool planning a little bit easier for me but I also write their chores for uh, the days that they are in charge of these are tasks that I have come up with from the passionate penny pincher home planner which is also releasing soon I will have a video of that when I purchase mine I have made a list of tasks that need to be done once during the week and so I have some my kids have some basic on different days and I use that daily habit tracker so that everybody can just check it off they see where it is and they can check it off I, it's a free printable on my website if you're interested I will leave a link in the description box it's very helpful for me and I think that it's very useful now I used to also print out a Google Calendar and just put that with a magnet on the refrigerator so that my kids could see that as well. And I think that was actually part of my September goals, but I didn't end up doing that because they've been really good about just using the daily habit trackers. So I haven't needed the calendar. And I think that's mainly because we're back in our regular homeschool rhythm now. And so they're used to checking things off for homeschool. I think in those couple of months where we're not homeschooling or they're just doing their individual work that they don't need mom's help with like their math and stuff those are the months that I mainly need the calendar because those are the months that I'm not doing as much with the daily habit tracker but overall I feel really good about the that goal as a whole the next goal was to finalize and continue to implement weekly monthly quarterly home management projects tasks I did a pretty good job with this I would say about 50% <laughs> In July and August, I was supposed to focus on the weekly projects that I have listed. Again, these are projects that a lot of them I pulled from the Passionate Penny Pincher Home Planner and some I just came up on my own. I have a video on how I came up with this. I will leave that linked if you're interested. I did terrible with these. I thought I would get a lot more done. I did not prioritize those projects at all and that's okay. I was looking at the weather and we had such a beautiful summer this year. I wanted to spend as much time outside as possible. And the reason was because last summer it rained the entire summer and I, it was a terrible, terrible summer. And I knew that personally, I just needed more vitamin D. So I spent time outside. I did not prioritize doing the weekly projects. The, the monthly and quarterly projects I did quite a good job with. I do have a vlog where I was going through my monthly tasks and kind of sharing how I set that up and what I'm doing. So I will leave that linked in the description box for you. I decided to plan everything on one day each month. My monthly tasks do not take a ton of time, you know, just a few hours in the morning to complete everything. And so I, it works for me in my season of life to do it this way and it keeps me accountable. That, that works pretty well for me. The next quarterly goal was a 90 day Bible reading plan and I started out really good with this 90 day plan and then um, at the beginning of July we had family visiting and I fell behind and a 90 day Bible reading plan you are reading so much so if you start to fall behind you fall behind quickly and so I am not done with the Bible reading <laughs> the 90 day Bible reading plan and I am I'm close to three quarters of the way done but 
this is a goal that I am going to continue probably through the end of September. I am hoping to finish by the end of September. We will see if it happens and then I am going to search for some new resources for October, November. I do have a couple of things that I'm using in my mom's morning basket related to my faith goal. And then my last goal relating to pursuing my passions and having helping my kids pursue their passions, my homeschool category, plan and start the 2024-2025 homeschool year, which we did. We started July 15th. We are early. We consider ourselves year-round homeschoolers. We do take um, a big break around Christmas and that is that and then usually in June is our other big break of the year. So I feel really good about that. I've done a homeschool update video already if you're interested in that. I'm so pleased with the choices that I've made this year for our homeschool and I think overall we're going to have a great year. It is a lot less stressful this year because this is the first time since Emma was nine I think that we do not have any public school activities. We are not in any sports, we are not in any extra classes and that is very different for us but we are very much looking forward to a little bit of a different fall. We have other activities that we're involved in, which we haven't had as much opportunity to do because we've done the public school activities. So that's kind of fun. But overall, I'm really pleased and would give myself full credit for this goal. Now, I did, before I move into my fall goals, I do want to let you know that I did do a revisiting my word of the year video last week and I think that that would be very helpful for you to watch to just see my frame of mind going into the fall, what I think about things overall, how things are going. So definitely go check out that video. I think that my guiding word, it guided me a little bit differently than I expected, but I'm really pleased with the progress that I've made. So now what I'm going to do is go through my action plans for the next few months. I use these mini goal action plans from Cultivate What Matters. I absolutely love them. It's a free printable on their website, so anybody can go and download them. I think it's, it's very helpful to have that. Uh, the other thing that I use, which I don't have right here, is the Break It Down notepad, and that's really helpful if you have a project that has a lot of steps. I really like to use that notepad pad as well. So what I'm going to do is just go through these action plans with you and then my video on Monday should share a little bit more in depth of how some of these action plans are going to work. So the first goal is related to my creating a rhythm of renewal goal as well as kind of my passion projects goal and that the first mini goal is the create rhythm from rhythms of renewal the book that i'm using to guide this goal this year and so i want to read the create section of this book and then i want to also choose the sections to focus on think about my hobbies and start to implement some of those ideas into my own life now i have not read through that section recently so i'm not entirely sure which ones I'm going to implement yet, um, but that is part of this fall goal for me. And then the second mini goal is hobbies. And I have talked a lot about hobbies this year, mostly that I want to start doing some hobbies that don't also have a productivity portion of that project. And I guess what I mean by that is like, I love knitting but I'm always knitting things that we need, not necessarily just knitting for fun. So I will knit hats for the kids, which I love to do, but there's kind of like a timeline for that, you know, before it gets cold here, or I'll knit dish rags because we are all of our dish rags are ratty and need to be, I need new ones. So it's not just about doing the hobby for fun. Uh, so I want to choose one for each month and and just let myself enjoy it. The hobby that I've mainly focused on this year because I could do it kind of without a secondary part to it was fiction reading. Even within my reading, when I am reading nonfiction or homeschool encouragement, I'm constantly taking ideas to try to implement into my life. And I just kind of wanted something that was a hobby that I didn't have a secondary focus for. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's that's kind of where I'm at. Um, and then I want to implement weekly accountability for whatever hobby I choose. 
years ago, I used to participate in a uh, yarn along by Ginny, a, a blogger, a mom blogger, <laughs> and crafty blogger. And she did that yarn along link up every Wednesday for years. And I always participated. It was sharing what we're reading and sharing the knitting project or crochet project that you were working on that week. And that kept me accountable to continuously work on projects. And once she stopped, I kind of stopped knitting as much. Part of it was just life circumstances. We had a lot of other stuff going on. Part of it was because I had nothing to share. I wasn't sharing on my website those posts anymore because I wasn't linking them up to anything. It just, so I need something. And so I'm considering bringing back some sort of weekly accountability like that where I'm either posting something on my website or posting on Instagram. I rarely use Instagram <laughs> um, for posting, but I thought maybe something like that would be good. We'll see. Then that may carry over into 2025 as well. But I think that weekly accountability would be helpful. And I may just end up doing that in my membership community as well. The next goal action plan that I have is still relating to that Rhythms of Renewal goal. And the first is to continue the rest rhythm, get into good homeschool rhythm and home management to spread it out over the week and then figure out where I can take time off because my to-do list is long. My kids are great at pitching in. I would like to be able to have more free time on the weekends, but what ends up happening is because our schedule is so full during the week with homeschool, the weekends are when I tend to do a lot of the bigger home management projects. And so I'm trying to figure out if there's a time during the week that I can work on those things so that I can have true rest. I do try to take Sunday as a complete rest day and not do anything until the afternoon when I start my planning. And so I kind of take from Saturday evening to Sunday evening to have some rest, but that is, that is still challenging and there are a lot of projects. Our first week off off for homeschool this year was Jack's birthday week and so I didn't work on any of the big home management projects that I wanted to work on. Not that I wanted to work on, I knew I wasn't going to be able to do that, but typically that week off that we have is when I'm doing the bigger home management projects that I know I don't have time to get to during the homeschool weeks. So we'll see. It's still kind of a work in progress, I'm not sure. Um, the next mini goal is to think about a book list because I have been in a book slump pretty much all year. There were some very specific books that I wanted to read this year and I've read all of those. I made a nonfiction book list at the beginning of the year and I finished all of those books in the first couple of months of the year, so I was really pleased about that. I never really come up with a fiction book list because I read a lot of indie authors and I never actually know when new books are coming out. I had maybe 10 fiction books that I wanted to read this year and I've read the ones that have already come out. So I kind of need to figure out what I'm going to read next and I just don't know. I am still reading but nothing has been like jumping out at me that I'm like oh I can't wait to read this series or this author or whatnot. So anyways I am behind in my book goal I think by maybe five books. I have a book goal of reading 150 books this year. I think I'm maybe at 90 something I think. Although I feel like I missed some of my books updating in Goodreads as well. So the total may be different. I need to go add up all of my books in my book journal. So I want to come up with a nonfiction book list and a fiction book list. I need to go on to Goodreads and just spend some time doing that. And I probably will do that during my monthly reset slash quarterly reset day. It's August 23rd when I'm filming this. So I have a little bit more time in August and um, as I'm planning out next quarter. So I think I want to spend a little bit of time going through Goodreads and just seeing if I can find some new books or maybe new authors. And then reading during the day for pleasure, it's something that I struggle with, but I want to do more of it this quarter. Okay, the next goal action plan is relating to my creating, continuing to create a life-giving home goal. And the first is weekly projects. I need to prioritize which ones I need to do because I am totally off schedule with what I listed out for July and August. So I need to catch up on those. So I need to prioritize which ones are important. Some of them I don't need to do because I've kind of done them a little bit and they're not 
deep cleaning projects that I need to focus on. And then I want to pick a couple of days during the week where I can focus on these weekly projects. I'm thinking probably Wednesday and Friday because Wednesday is a kid's passion project day, so it's a lighter school day with me. And then Friday is our screen free day, which means that we're not on screens, although I like to do a lot of reading and just hanging out with the kids on Fridays, so we'll see. The next is fall inventories. This I think was actually on my August tending list, but I did not get to it. Um, as much as I needed to. I need to organize them in a binder and then I need to make a list of what we need for the kids for fall, winter, and then also like homestead type things that we need and then finish fall food prep. I need to figure out, I did some canning a couple of weeks ago, but I found out that where I used to purchase tomatoes, I used to buy like 100 to 200 pounds of tomatoes from this farmer and I didn't think that he was doing bulk tomatoes anymore but my mom called me a couple of days ago and told me that she saw a sign out so I need to call them and see if I can get some. We're getting kind of late and if and if I'm able to do that it probably will be the first weekend in September like Labor Day weekend so I'm not sure. We also have family coming up that weekend so we'll see. We'll see. I might be pushing it if I try and can and have family the, in the same weekend. Okay, um, so I want to work on my fall inventories and then I want to work on decluttering. In the At the beginning of the year, I went through a whole lot of stuff. I got rid of, not I, di I didn't get rid of things. I sorted them out into bags because I thought we would have a yard sale this spring, summer. I got shingles at the end of May and so that threw off having a sale at the you know beginning of summer and then summer got away from me and we were starting homeschool and I didn't have time to plan a yard sale so I need to get rid of all of this stuff. It's a lot of stuff and I feel like it would be so stupid to just go and donate it because it's such a lot of it is really good quality stuff but I don't know if having a yard sale would even work. In September. I'm not sure if anybody would come out for a yard sale. It might be too late. I don't know. I really don't know. So I, I need to get this stuff out of my house though because it doesn't make sense to declutter it and then just to store a bunch of bags and boxes. I have boxes of books. I have bags of clothes. I have shoes. I have uh, just all kinds of stuff. Furniture, things that just need to get out of the house. I have to figure it out. Um, I want to get rid of the books. I have boxes of like huge boxes of ARCs with advanced reader copies because I used to get sent books all the time from publishers. I don't accept books anymore that are physical books uh, for review just because I don't have any space for them but I have these boxes of ARCs and I don't know what to do with them because you can't sell them. The library doesn't want to take them so I don't know what to do <laughs> with them. I really don't. Uh, yeah, so I don't know. Maybe I could give them to Goodwill. I don't know if Goodwill would even take them. And then I want to clean up the holiday decorations and winter gear, and that kind of relates to the inventories. What things do we need um, going into the holiday season? Which I start prepping for Christmas, usually in September, because I try and space out the purchasing of things, the purchasing of our advent boxes, purchasing of Christmas pajamas, all of that kind of stuff, planning out cards and food and um, gifts. It's better for me if I just plan it over several months instead of just in December. The next goal action plan is relating to my legacy goal, my embracing legacy goal. The first is my Florida album. I need to go to Michael's or AC Moore. I don't know. One of them bought the other and buy an album and any extra things that I want to go in the book. I'm still not entirely sure if I'm just going to buy a photo album with sleeves where I just stick all of the pictures in and say this is good I'm done with it or if I want to do more of a scrapbook. Scrapbooking is something that I used to do years ago with my mom. We bought all of the creative memories stuff. I don't know if anybody still does creative memories but I loved that. I would like to get back to it maybe next year. It's one of those hobbies that I've been considering. I don't know. That's kind of an aside. So I want to buy the album. I want to put the pictures in the album and then I want to do some journaling pages because even if I don't do like a traditional scrapbook, I want to have some journaling pages in the album of just 
you know, how the trip went because we drove to Florida. We were gone for a couple of weeks. It was a lot of fun. It was, there were some really stressful times or were some really fun times. So I just want to have all of those memories in one book, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, the next one is my Florida video. I want to select the pictures that I want to insert into the video, finish the rough edit, and then add music. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, and then December memories. This kind of relates to business goals as well uh, for Vlogmas. I want to do Vlogmas again this year. I want to journal every day and take a picture a day. I've also considered looking more into the December daily scrapbooking that Allie Edwards does. I've seen several people on YouTube do this December daily thing during Vlogmas over the past many years and it looks really interesting to me. I'm not sure if it's something that I would actually do or not. I'm not sure how much stuff I would have to buy for that from her. I don't really know the process so it's something that I have to kind of look into and figure out if I want to do that or not. And like I said, I don't really have December goals but um, this does kind of fit into December. It's really the only one that I would add to my list and that's because it is in my Embracing Legacy goal. Then the next one is my financial goal, continue to nurture finances, and that is to decide on a 2025 financial planner, whether I'm going to do Quicken or YNAB. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to do Quicken. I downloaded YNAB and I, I really like it, but I personally do not need help budgeting. I know how to budget well. I was looking for something more for reporting and transactions and YNAB doesn't give you the opportunity to retroactively plan and I really need a year at a glance. So I want to be able to go back through all of my transactions. I know that this sounds insane, um, but for me, I've already done all of that work so it doesn't take me that long to do. I used to use Quicken. I'm an old school Quicken user. I stopped using it when they went to a subscription fee instead of, you know, just buying the software and installing it on your computer. So I think what I'm going to do is probably go with Quicken. So it's kind of already decided, but when I wrote out this action plan, it wasn't. And then the next step is to update transactions and categories for 2024 and figure out which ones are most important for 2025. And then the second mini goal is holiday budgets. I need to make some lists, when to buy what, what I was just talking about as far as like advent calendars and um, other resources that we're going to be using um, around advent and Christmas pajamas and all of that stuff. Then I also want to figure out gifts. We do the want, wear, need, read. So we do that as as well as kind of like a faith resource as well. So I need to figure that stuff out and then figure out food for all of the holidays. I have Lucy's birthday, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. So and Christmas Eve and New Year's. So it's a lot, a lot of bigger food days in the end of the year. So I need to figure that all out. So those are my goal action plans for the fall. Again, it's mainly for September through November, a few things for December, but not really anything too wild, I guess, or, you know, hard, just things that I'm normally doing. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video, a little peek into my quarterly goal planning. If you have questions about anything, please let me know in the comments, or you can email me. My contact form is always in the description box. We're going to be talking a lot about goals over the next several months in my membership community. I would love for you to come check us out if you're looking for more accountability around that. And don't forget to come back next week and see all of my thoughts on all of the new power sheets and season by season and fresh start products from Cultivate What Matters to set us up for success for 2025. Again, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you in the next one. Thanks guys. Bye.